Okay. Then, um, as we, we got now uh, very interesting introductions to uh, biorefineries in the bioeconomy, and we got also uh, in this context um, we have info, information about bio-based availability, also for third generation bio-based, and also uh, some information from Adelaide about the market perspective and as well as the legal context of um, uh, yeah, the, the, the bioeconomy. I will speak now, I will give you now, as we spoke already all the time about volatile, so I will give you a short introduction uh, over the general framework of uh, uh, volatile and then uh, uh, yeah, and then uh, we will have follow-up presentations of the 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 the, the different um, yeah work packages there. Okay. Okay. Um, volatile um, towards a bio waste recycling. Um, yeah. Before I, I start to give an overview about volatile, I would like also to, to give a short introduction, like Thies also did it before, where, where I'm coming from. I'm, I'm working in, in uh, Technalia, uh, one of our uh, yeah, aims is uh, 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 to, to transform knowledge or, uh, in, in, or technology in, into GDP. We are quite a huge organization. We have 1, more than 1,400 people uh, staff. And as you can see also there down, in the picture where we are the headquarters are in the Basque uh, country of uh, in Spain, but we are uh, active uh, in, uh, long yeah in uh, worldwide with uh, own offices or or shares in, in other technology centers. And of course, besides, besides, we are working in different uh, areas, but we are also working in the bioeconomy because of course we are also committed to the future and the society and our environment. But our main objective is all the time there to look for business opportunities uh, based on, on natural, natural resources. And that's the reason why we are involved in, in, in the project Volatile. Okay, as everybody knows, we have, we have in the moment a, a certain uh, challenge. Let's say we have to transform from a linear economy towards, uh, uh, yeah, we have to, to, to change from a linear economy because uh, our resources we are using are finite resources and um, so on the long term we, we we cannot do that anymore like this so we have to transform towards a circular economy trying to recycle um, as much as possible from our input streams uh, yeah and, and to reuse them at a certain point and in this context not only as also um, Jochen mentioned already a circular approach for the bioeconomy has to has to be done, and that has to be done beyond also only biogas, also or fertilizers, also reusing uh, bio waste uh, as as fertilizer. Um, it's a good so end of waste treatment uh, option. Uh, if there's no other opportunity, it's a possibility. But uh, we are using in agriculture. Um, Fertilizers and energy to make them later on. Fertilizers and energy, maybe that's not the, the best way. So we should try to reuse all the uh, the, the bio waste or biomass which we, we are originally producing. Uh, the European Compost Network in 2015 calculates with around 88 million tons of bio waste per year in the European Union, uh, whereas we have already seen from these. During our own analysis, we were coming to a conclusion that it's more than 100 million tons of bio waste uh, available, which could be used as a feedstock for a circular bioeconomy. And there steps in our project volatile. Okay. Um, before I would like to go more in detail to the project, maybe that you have an idea uh, uh, yeah, about the complexity of these kind of value chains. So you have on one side um, uh, the the the, the uh, put like uh, you have uh, one moment um, um, you have on one side uh, 
the producers of the bio waste that can be our as our society that can be uh, normal households but it can be also industry which is uh, has a side streams um, bio waste then they are normally collected at a certain way uh, already source separated or uh, uh, mixed uh, with, with other fractions together as also Thies was explaining it or showing it so it can be mixed with, with plastics. I think he, uh, if I remember that he mentioned 50% is still included in the normal uh, municipal waste. So then it, it can be called urban bio waste. It's, uh, it's a solid bio waste, but it, a certain amount of our bio waste is also coming uh, during the wastewater treatment uh, um, processing. Okay. There, a normal process, normally integrated uh, um, in, in, in solid bio waste uh, treatment, but also wastewater treatment uh, um, plants, is the so called anaerobic digestion. Also, as Jochen was already mentioning before, anaerobic tra uh, uh, digestion transforms uh, the organic material into biogas, which can be transformed in electric um, uh, energy. and uh, also, you are getting a digest tape which, you, which can be used as fertilizer. But it's in, from this perspective, it can be circular. But as I said already, if you consider that we are using fertilizers and energy to make these biomass, then maybe it's circular, but it's not the, the most uh, appropriate uh, uh, use of resources. In this co uh, context comes volatile. So as you could have, as you have also seen already in the presentation of Jochen, and which will be more detailed uh, in the next presentation by Philip. Uh, there comes volatile. What we are trying to do, or what we did uh, successfully, is to recover the so-called volatile fatty acids from this anaerobic digestions before it is transformed to biogas, and then using these volatile fatty acids uh, for different applications. So as you can see, it's a very complex thing. There are a lot of stake holders uh, involved along the value chain okay so that means um, for that reason as it is quite complex we have a consortium of 21 partners from research bigger industry partners and SME partners which are along the whole value chain that means from waste treatment wastewater treatment plants uh, technology provider for anaerobic digestion uh, to biotechnology companies to develop new uh, bioprocesses. Uh, we have uh, IT solutions inside. I will explain it then later on. So that there are really a lot of things to 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 understand. Uh, yeah, the whole value chain and not only to develop the um, yeah the the technology, but also to understand the value chain and to implement it in the most appropriate way. Okay, so here you have a general scheme what we are going to do or what we did in the project. So that means you have normally organic wastes or side streams, bio waste. It can be from industry, it can be municipal bio waste, or it can be coming from uh, wastewater treatment uh, um, plants. We developed a so-called, we call it volatile fatty acid platform. It's based on anaerobic digestion. I will not uh, um, go there much in detail as Philip will explain that later on you will have a certain amount which is not transformed that it's going can be further uh, uh, converted in biogas via anaerobic digestion as we did it also at our test case in Twense. and then we are recovering this volatile fatty acids and using them as carbon source for our fermentation approaches uh, why is this interesting as the normal fermentation approaches in the bio economy a lot of them, the first generation, are relying on glucose, which is a food grade uh, um, source, and uh, therefore comp competing with the food chain. So it would be better if you have carbon sources for fermentation approaches, which are uh, um, yeah waste based. And what we did is by bacteria, we are producing PHA, single cell oil for all your chemical uh, applications by yeast and omega-3 fatty acids by heterotrophic microalgae. So this is only from the technological perspective. But as I saw, said already before, it's a very complex value chain. So we have a so-called agent-based modeling where SIA will give us later on more information about 
to model how consumers or waste producers are acting and how this affects our whole uh, value chain. This agent-based model we were using to create a web-based decision support tool, which can be also assessed via our website. And then we are also supporting standardization via uh, SEN workshop uh, agreement. And this helps us, of course, uh, in the exploitation of our own processes. Okay. Um, so, as, as this was already showing, so we have here the, the, um, the, the, our volatile fatty acid platform. Uh, it's seen here, the container, which is connected to the normal anaerobic digestion plant. And then um, what we did, we produced or so transformed organic waste into volatile fatty acids, which we were able to recover. Uh, with uh, membrane filtration and which was then used as feedstock for polyhydroxyalkanoate, single cell oil and omega-3 fatty acids. What you can see here is also Philip will explain that a little bit more in detail. It's not an um, one volatile fatty acid. Uh, it's a mix of different kind of uh, um, volatile fatty acids which uh, on one perspective, maybe it makes it more uh, challenging in implementing a fermentation approach, but on the other side, especially for our polyhydroxyalkanoids, uh, it's an uh, interesting mix, but there Bruno later on will explain that more in detail. So that that what I said, we, we, we developed uh, in the project using this volatile fatty acids to uh, as feedstock for bacterial uh, fermentation to obtain these polyhydroxyalkanoids. Uh, we extracted the polyhydroxyalkanoids and then we transformed them uh, in biofilms uh, to, yeah, uh, to be used as uh, material applications. That was under the lead of uh, Biotrend. As I said already, Bruno Sommerfelder will give later on uh, a presentation on biopolyesters made, made from, from waste streams. The second uh, value chain uh, was a yeast based uh, yeast based uh, value chain that means we used oligenous um, yeast strains to transform um, the obtained volatile fatty acid in single cell oil that was mainly done under the uh, yeah uh, with the under the lead of the university Minho for the selection of the yeast strains from Boku or Ifatulen in Austria to um, yeah, upscale or use this G strains to implement the fermentation approaches up to, a, I, if I'm not wrong, a 200, 400 liter scale. Uh, there, Marcos will give us more insights. And then Tegnalia was extracting this uh, oil and we used that uh, for the production of uh, uh, soap. So it was really, a, we were really able to transform bio waste coming from the volatile fatty acid platform in. A soap um, with this, um, um, yeah, via this volatile fatty acids. So quite, quite interesting uh, application. And then <clears throat> the third value chain was a microalgae value chain, the uh, hetero, with heterotrophic microalgae. Uh, the evangelist will give us later on uh, further information on. It was, um, yeah, done under the cooperation between National Technical University of Athens. Uh, Technalia and uh, Biozoon. Biozoon is a food ingredient uh, uh, company, so they are quite interested in this omega-3 uh, fatty acid. Uh, why we did this uh, different approaches is to show the potential of this volatile fatty acids. So it's not for only one strain can use them. No, we could show that bacteria, yeasts, and uh, microalgae are able to use these uh, volatile fatty acids as carbon source for, for different applications. And especially in the field of um, omega-3 fatty acid, it has also a certain um, importance in the moment uh, as we have uh, uh, this pandemic ongoing for, for um, uh, yeah, uh, coronavirus. One of the main problems uh, of the, the coronavirus is that it's producing uh, inflammations and thrombosis in the lung tissue. And there are several uh, clinical test trials running to use um, fish oil based treatments um, 
to to yeah prevent uh, or to to reduce the the risks of the the patients to come to the intensive care. What is the key thing here is uh, this fish oil based uh, treatments are also based on omega three fatty acids. That means EPA and DHA and the fish. Uh, normally, it's not producing it by itself. It's taking it from the environment via the food chain, and it's originally algae-based uh, produced. So that means our our concept also to produce omega uh, fatty acids um, directly with microalgae is also a certain importance for the current uh, situation. Okay, so that what we can see here is again to add, as we will get now further or more detailed information on the volatile fatty acid platform, as we can see it here in the in the in the middle. Um, then uh, afterwards, uh, Bruno will speak about uh, the, the production or using this volatile fatty acids for the production of polyhydroxyalkanoates. There are also some interesting uh, uh, out, outcomes uh, based on the mix of the volatile fatty acids. So we were able to produce also biomaterial films out of uh, our material, as our, our polyhydroxyalkanoates. Then Markus will, Markus Narreiter from Boko will speak about the single cell oil production using volatile fatty acids, and Vangelis will speak about the omega-3 fatty uh, um, acids produced with microalgae. And then, of course, as I said already, uh, the value chain is very complex, so we, we developed on one side the the, the technologies for the uh, for the um, yeah for the um, for the transformation of the bio waste into volatile fatty acids and also in the added value compounds. But we analyzed also the market that was done under the, uh, uh, the lead of BioZoon. Ali I was giving there this morning already a presentation on it. So, but if there's somebody interested, uh, some of our deliverables are also uh, public. They are evaluable in our website, uh, in our stakeholder platform. Furthermore, uh, Anneleit is she, uh, under the lead of uh, uh, Wiedemann GmbH. We analyzed uh, legislations. There you can have also, for example, the 2.2 and report on EU legislative barriers and stimuli towards our volatile fatty asset based value chain. And then uh, there's also a survey report from the European Union. Uh, European Commission related to OVAN, uh, circular OVAN uh, bioeconomy and bio waste utilization, because of course the Commission is also aware that certain legislation are hindering the implementation of uh, um, yeah uh, the use of uh, hindering of the implementation of these kind of value chains as uh, certain yeah, side streams are considered as waste and. So they assessed in their survey report to, to analyze the, what has to be changed. And they are also volatile was contributing uh, to this report. Then under the lead of KPET from um, UK, we have also a deliverable on the cost situation analysis of our test cases. It's also a public deliverable available on our um, stakeholder platform, as well as a deliverable to uh, related to life cycle uh, performance of our uh, test cases uh, inside of our project. They can be also these deliverables which you can see here, you can uh, assess also via our um, stakeholder platform. Okay, and then so we have technologies to convert the bio waste into volatile fatty acids. We have uh, technologies to, uh, to convert the volatile fatty acids in added value compounds. We know what is the market, we know about legislation, we know about the economic performance as well as uh, life, also environmental performance of our processes. But of course, uh, these are only specific points in the value chain. Uh, and they are quite affected by behavior, consumer, also waste producer behavior, and also behavior of uh, yeah, of different actors along the value chain. So, uh, under the lead of EV Ilvo, we developed a so-called agent-based modeling to to look how um, behavior can be changed, what would be the effect of this change, and how that would affect our our volatile fatty acid platform. So, also informatic or IT solutions are needed if we want to implement uh, um, yeah a circular bioeconomy. As we, we could 
uh, uh, do it in our project. And if somebody is there interested, also this agent-based model, what was developed by EVL Group, was then implemented in a, um, uh, in a um, web-based decision support tool. It's also uh, accessible via our um, uh, website of Volatile. That was done under the lead of O'Day, um, small and medium enterprise here in, in Spain, IT solutions. So uh, as you can see, the implementation of a circular bioeconomy requires a lot of different actors and a lot of, uh, yeah, uh, technology solutions to do it in a in a proper way. Okay, then of course um, standardization will affect or affects uh, these kind of value chains. So we were trying to implement there also. Um, yeah, we were trying to, to to help in standardization processes. So we prepared the so-called SEN workshop agreement. There, uh, Jochen will later on uh, speak again about it with the help of Christian Grunewald from Dean. So it was finalized and it's published. So it can be also available if you are there interested in. And then, as I mentioned already, you can assess our stakeholder platform where the public deliverables are available related to the uh, not public deliverables. We have normally some fact sheets uh, summarizing some non-confidential uh, information. It's of course free of charge. It's, uh, you can register there also via our web, uh, website. So to have it again, before we start now with the technological uh, uh, work packages, in this case, so we have eight ca uh, case studies which we analyzed uh, um, from, from, from different countries, from Portugal, waste, pro uh, waste treatment facility from Spain. Uh, we have a food waste producer in Gre uh, Greece. We have Quenze uh, uh, from the Netherlands and we have Ige and Aquafin and Idelux from Belgium, where we uh, uh, assessed their, their yeah, waste treatment operations and how they could uh, implement our uh, yeah, volatile fatty assets. So we, we make case study implementation market barrier analysis because this market barrier and stimulus will depend also strongly. Also, if you have a European framework, um, everyone is affected by, by national or regional legislation, which we assessed also, which is not publicly uh, valuable because it is used for our uh, business cases uh, to be implemented. So we have bio waste, anaerobic um, digestion or volatile fatty acid platform, the recovery of the volatile fatty acids and the use of this volatile fatty acids for different fermentation approaches. Uh, and we have a support by a SEN workshop agreement, a decision support tool, and we are cur currently finalizing our uh, roadmap uh, as policy um, uh, recommendations for, for interested stakeholders. Okay, then I would, uh, as I said, so we, we are presenting some people today results of our project, but uh, as you can see, we have a very big group of, of people uh, working on this project. And I would also like to say thank you uh, to everyone um, yeah, working so hardly to, to get uh, the, the results which we achieved. We have still one month to go, but there are some open things to be solved. But uh, I think we, we, we are going quite, quite well during this project. Okay. Then if you have any questions now or also later, you can write me an email. You can also uh, contact Bianca, which is our dissemination manager, or Philip, he will present afterwards now, more organic waste systems. Um, you can have access via our, this is our website, volatile-at-vente-vente.eu. Uh, we have also um, a video available in, as a, about the project in, in, in German, in Spanish, in, in uh, no, in German, in English, uh, I think in French and in Portuguese. Uh, and then we have also several webinars uh, available in our YouTube channel if you would be interested in this. Okay, so then thank you very much. Um, I now I should have uh, shared my screen as a, let's say my, my, my camera, but uh, I don't know why um, the webcam in the moment when I was putting it on, uh, I was uh, the, the um, presentation was disappearing. So, uh, if there are any questions, um, otherwise, um, we can also join to the um, 
Uh, yeah. Uh, to the next. Um, there's any question there? Somebody was raising their hand, but I think it's not. Okay. Slavomir, uh, uh, if you have a question, can you write it in the in the in the in the question um, section? Or was it only not with uh, with purpose? Um, Okay. So then, thank you very much for listening. And then I will give now the, uh, the screen uh, to Philip.